Okay, uh, mapping genes found on the same chromosome. Genes found on the same chromosomes, of course, are called link genes. They're linked together on the same chromosome. Okay, so how they're able to map these is by looking at crossover frequencies. And uh, that's all articulated in the notes. If you have any questions with that, uh, give me an email. Uh, but let's just take a look at an example question and go through the steps on how to do this. So it says use the following crossover frequencies uh, to map the following linked genes on the chromosome below. And they give you just a bunch of genes and how, what percentage of crossover frequency, uh, frequency exists between them. So when we have a question like this, always good just to put a chromosome on there and we're just going to map where a b c d the sequence of a b c d on this chromosome uh, is so uh, step one find the highest crossover frequency that exists between two genes so the highest frequencies i see is 11 percent and that's for c and d i'm going to put these guys at opposite ends of the spectrum on this chromosome and i'm going to say that this is 11 percent okay now we go find the next highest crossover frequency and I see this one right here at 5.5 percent that's B and C now that's pretty much rate splitting 11 percent right in half so B and C I'm gonna take C here and I'm gonna go right relatively in the middle and I'm gonna say that's B and that is 5.5 percent crossover frequency Okay, now they're saying, let's go to the next highest, and that's how you uh, sequentially go down to highest to lowest crossover frequency. The next one is 3%, and that is for A and C. So here's C, it only makes sense if approximately, and then we're not gonna pull out a ruler and start to measure this, but it makes sense that A is right here because they're saying that this distance is 3%. And A and B, well, you know what? Maybe I should have put it over a little bit more because this is 3% because this distance is a little bit smaller. A and B, our next one, is 2.5. So just a little bit, little bit uh, shorter distance there. Okay? So the sequence that we see, and I think we've mapped them all, C, A, B, D. Most questions will ask you to transfer that sequency on your either numerical response or whether or not it was in a multiple choice. But that would be C, A, B, D. Or if you map them the other way, it could be the reverse of this. D, B, A, C. But that is the sequence. There's always two answers when they're asking for sequence depending on which way you started mapping it. Okay, but that is the sequence. The only other issue we have here is this unknown distance right here. So in my notes, sometimes I say you have to subtract known crossover frequencies to find an unknown. So they're saying this is an unknown. Best way to do that is take the biggest chunk, C and D is 11%. Then take the next biggest chunk that you know, and that's C and B right here, this one here. If I take that 5.5 and I subtract it from this, I can find out what this unknown is. And of course, that comes out to 5.5, the distance of this unknown right here. So often what you have to do, and you'll see that in a few of the examples, is you have to subtract two known frequencies. And it's best usually to take the big chunk and then the next chunk that will give you the unknown. Subtract those and uh, you should have no issues with coming up with uh, the unknown question or the unknown frequency. Okay, any questions with the assignment or any of that, give me an email and we can address that. Thanks.